If you have watched and followed the first two parts, you should now have one high poly shield and one low poly. So the next thing we want to do is UV unwrap the low poly mesh and then create a simple shader so we can bake the normal maps from the high poly to the low poly. So therefore, let's go into the UV editing tab. Now first make sure that the little icon with the two arrows is selected. So no matter what we have selected in the 3D view, we have still our UVs in the UV editor. And then open the properties view and under overlay enable stretching. So here we can see which parts we still have to unwrap. Unwrapping the shield is rather simple. Now, for example, if we take one of those outer planks and then in um, edit mode, if we unwrap it, so just press U and then click on unwrap, you can see it's already perfectly unwrapped and we don't need to add any seams. Next, let's, let's take a look at the handle. Make sure you have the low poly version. And then here we need to add one seam. So I just kind of add it on the down side part, um, just with all selecting one new loop and then pressing control E to add a seam and then unwrapping it again and it works fine. For the other planks, especially for the middle one, we also need one seam. So just selecting it, pressing Ctrl E again, mark seam, and then unwrapping it again. So now the other auto plank, that is also fine. And we just have left one more of those middle wooden planks. Here again, gonna go in edit mode, select one of the edges, um, mark it as a seam and unwrap. Don't worry right now about the position of your UV. So if you're there kind of overlapping and there was stretching, that doesn't matter. We're going to work on that later. So next we're going to take a look at the metal part. So that is still looking a bit messy. So here we need a few more seams to um, kind of cut through that. I like to select seams that are kind of more on the inside. So generally hidden seams are of course the perfect choice, but uh, we can't always have that one. Um, and then, um, yeah, sometimes you just have to try out what works best and see how that looks. So um, what I'm basically doing is just adding some seams and then with the stretching, we can see, okay, which part is still light green. And then you can select it in the UV editor and see in the 3D part, which part is selected and where do you have to do some changes. For the outer ring, I added one seam. So that's why you can see it's kind of stretching super big on the left side. So I decided to add one more seam, kind of splitting it into two parts. I'm not sure if that's really better because now um, it kind of can take more space in the UV map. That means more detail later on, but on the other hand, it means one more seam. The only thing now left to do is somehow to create from all these objects, just one UV map. So what we're gonna do is in object mode, selecting all the low poly and then going into edit mode and unwrap it. Now we have all the UV islands kind of placed beside each other instead of on top. And in the bottom menu, we can also change the margin. So we have some space in between them. A lot of times when you look at texture maps, you will recognize that most of the time there are parts kind of grouped by each other. So you have one group that is the wood part and then uh, in the other corner of the map, you have metal part or whatever. So that is something we're also trying to do to kind of group all the parts that are logical belonging together into one corner. And then another thing we're gonna do is align vertices. So here I'm selecting three of them, right click and then set on align on the X axis. That is um, kind of creating a straight line between those vertices. This is probably a bit of an artifact from older times, but it's really nice if you have some straight lines and your v UVs are not completely turned around and uh, whatever. And as long as now you see, okay, one part is turning a light blue, that's okay. As long as it's not going green or something, then you can straighten it out and it's no problem. Okay, now probably I have been talking a little bit too much. So let's take a look at the next plank and let's go over step by step what I'm actually doing. So first I'm going to check that what orientation that UV island has. So this one I'm going to turn around. So um, the two upper faces are both pointing in the same direction of the shield. Then in vertex mode, I'm going to select like those middle three ones and then align them on the X axis. Same for the other three and um, same for the outer two, but not for the outer three because they're too far apart. I mean, maybe you could do it. And then the other ones, I of course gonna align to the Y axis. So they're all in one line and, and I have nice 90 degrees um, between those lines. 
and everything looks just nice and clean. And then at the top we can select a face selection mode again and then just scale and move that island a little bit around so it's nicely fitting next to the other one. Just make sure you have some spaces in between. Now for the other planks I'm gonna do the same so I'm gonna see okay which part is, has to be going up. Um, so therefore I'm selecting here now all the faces from the other ones and then selecting two faces from there and see if that's the right one and then just turn it around. You can turn it and say at exactly 90 degrees or just turn it by hand, doesn't matter much. And then I'm just gonna move the other islands that I don't need for now out of the way so I have some space. It doesn't have to be perfect yet because we can still scale and pull them around so just we have some space for our wooden planks and we can finish those ones off. And now we can do again the same thing so we're gonna align our vertices so we have some more straight lines. Um, here, if you are selecting the outer ones, you're going to realize that something strange is happening if you align them. So um, I'm first going to do the inner ones like we did before, selecting three of them, aligning them on the x-axis, doing the same for the other side. And then um, we have to turn off um, the, synchronizing, uh, the synchronization of the mesh. So in the top, just toggle off that one icon with the two arrows and then select your whole mesh uh, in the 3D view. And then um, you will see your UV islands again and then you can straighten them out one by one and you don't affect the other side anymore. Okay, now that we finished the wooden planks, um, the rest of the UVs I'm not gonna align anything because they are already straight. Um, okay, the handle we could do, but that's so small, so we're just gonna leave that one out. And um, now it's basically just moving the parts around, scaling them, so you use as much space of the UV map as you can and um, still have space between the islands that later on when we bake, we don't bake uh, parts over each other and it's looking weird. Um, so yeah, basically just move them around, scale them until you're happy. Now that we're finished with the UV mapping, we're gonna go to the shading part and we want to bake a normal map. Now in comparison to all the other times, um, we now have many different objects, but we still want to bake them all on one material. So from the drop down, we can just choose the existing material and we're gonna assign that one material to each of the low poly meshes we have. Before we do so, let's create first an image texture. So we shift A, we can create a new one and we're gonna name that something like sh um, shield and a normal nor whatever. Um, I'm gonna give it size of 2K and we don't need any alpha channel here. Now in the image view on the left, we can choose that image. Currently it should be just completely black, that's fine. So we're gonna bake on this black image all the normal parts that we have. The only thing now left to do is assign this material to each of the low poly objects. So select one of the low poly objects and then from the drop down of the material, assign that one material we created to it. And then just repeat it for all the other low poly objects you have. So no matter what low poly object you select, in the end you should see in the bottom always that same material tab open with our created image texture and the BSDF shader. We want to bake the normal map just part by part. So we're gonna hide everything except for one part. I'm gonna start with the handle. So we're just gonna select everything and hide it either with the eye icon or just pressing H. And then unhide the high poly and the low poly version of the handle. Now in the baking tab, we're gonna switch the rendering engine to cycles. And in the bake options that should now appear in the bottom, we can choose bake type normal and say select it to active. Here you can change the ray distance. Um, we're gonna try out a few different values, just set it a little bit greater than zero and leave the rest as it is. Now first select the high poly and then we shift the low poly and then click on bake. Now, just after a few seconds, you should have a nice result. So the black image should be gone. And uh, we can avoid some of those hard edges in our baking result by shading both objects smooth. And then we can do the baking once more and then hopefully it's uh, looking much better. Mm -hmm. 
I just played around a little bit with the ray distance value. So now I'm happy with the result. So next on, I can hide both of the handle objects and unhide, um, for example, the metal parts. And then we can do the baking here. So um, when you're selecting both of them, so first high poly, then low poly. And then in the options, make sure to disable clear image before you bake. So that means that the original image stays and it's just baking over the parts um, that are selected. So now you should so, still see the normal map from your handle and uh, but also the baking results from the metal part. So what we're going to do here is now also do the um, shade, smooth shading and then bake again. And um, we should have now some really nice smooth results besides the first results that we already had. All that is left to do now is just repeat this for all the other parts. So one by one, just select um, always the low poly and the high poly, hide all the other parts, do the baking again, make sure that you don't clear the image in between. And then uh, in the end, you should have a nice normal map. When you're baking all the different parts, you might have to change the ray distance sometimes because sometimes the high and the low poly are really far apart from each other and then sometimes they're not. So just make sure that you don't have any kind of green spots on your normal map. And if so, if there's something looking a bit weird, just change the ray distance and then bake again. As soon as that, that is done, we can connect the normal map. So I just gonna connect it with the um, shader and then in between pack a normal map. And then we should be able to see um, the sculpted detail from our high poly on our low poly mesh. And after each of our low poly mesh has the same material, so as soon as for that one material we connect the normal map to the shader, we should see it on all the other materials, that, uh, on all the other low poly objects that we have. And then we have a nice result. If the result is looking good, we can save our normal map. And then in the next video, we're going to do the painting and coloring of our shield.